Welcome to the EPIRB Project Biological Sampling Guide. This video focuses on pragmatic issues related to representative sampling of benthic macroinvertebrates from different types of rivers. The guidance presented in the video should not be used for coastal waters or standing waters, such as lakes or reservoirs. Biological samples are taken in order to estimate a river's ecological status or potential. Ecological status can be defined as the ability of a system to support and maintain a balanced, integrated, adaptive community of macroinvertebrates having a taxonomic diversity, abundance, and functional organization comparable to the natural reference conditions of the surface water type. The presence of macroinvertebrates is one of the most important criteria in the EU Water Framework Directive pertaining to a river's ecological status. The applied method used for an assessment must be efficient and cost-effective. You should be able to provide an accurate assessment of the river's condition within a relatively short time period. The work should involve no more than two people and requires anywhere from 40 minutes to an hour of field work per sampling site, covering five to eight sample sites per working day, depending on travel distances, and requires no more than 30 minutes of office preparation and data analysis. The Applied Assessment Field Data Sheet is divided into four categories explained further. The first two, General Geographic Information and Sampling Requisites, are the responsibility of the monitoring operator. The second person involved can record field observations during sampling or be recorded after macroinvertebrate sampling. The last section, Ecological Assessment, can be calculated later at the lab or office. What are we going to sample? Macroinvertebrates. These are animals that do not have backbones but are visible to the naked eye. A variety of these organisms live at the bottom of the stream, the benthos. Many benthic macroinvertebrates are insects at the larval stage, but there are also freshwater aquatic worms, snails, clams, and crustaceans, such as crabs, crayfish, and shrimp. Biological sampling consists of five principal steps. The first step is preparation, which involves careful planning of the sampling program and the planning of field activities. The second step, sampling research inspection, takes place on site. The objective here is to complete the field data sheet to document, for example, the site description, bottom substrata, general physico-chemical and hydromorphological conditions, and land use. The third step involves taking samples using appropriate field devices by collecting replicas from multiple habitats. The next step is to sort out and identify the organism at the lowest possible level, usually family, genus, but sometimes even the species. Once the taxa are identified, one part of the sample is saved in containers with preservatives and returned to the laboratory for processing, this being the last step of the sampling. Step 1. Preparation. The sampling process starts with careful planning and preparation for the work that lies ahead. This saves time and helps to minimize problems that tend to occur during fieldwork. It is important at the very earliest stage to have clear health and safety indicators and also to have quality protocols and specific sampling protocols designed for the biological element. Before leaving for the site, double check maps to identify the correct work locations. The following materials should be gathered and prepared prior to doing any sampling work. GPS, map, camera, antibacterial liquid soap, life jackets, if the river is large, deep, or turbulent, a hand net sampler, which is the most important tool for kick and wash sampling, naturalist's dredge with a rope for taking samples at high water levels, bucket for washing the hand net and sieving macroorganisms, set of three sieves, diameter 20 centimeters, 1,000 milliliter sample containers or jars for collecting final samples after pretreatment, a white tray, fixative and conservation compounds, 
tweezers for operating with macroinvertebrates during pretreatment, sampling field protocol for macroinvertebrates, field magnifying glass, waterproof waders and waist belt, gloves, field meters for pH, dissolved oxygen, temperature, and electroconductivity, and camping table and chairs. We recommend from a safety point of view that at least two people carry out field activities. In addition, a contact person should be assigned at headquarters to which field personnel can report daily at pre-designated times. Careful planning of field activities is essential and it is imperative to obtain permission to access private land. Step 2. Sampling Reach Inspection A 50 to 100 meter stretch of water should be selected that is representative of the river's characteristics in terms of habitat, natural variability, and physical and structural elements. It is recommended that the sampling team walk upstream and downstream on both sides of the river and check for any changes that may have occurred since the last visit. When selecting the river stretch, the following aspects are then taken into account. The sample area should accurately reflect the flow characteristics of the river. If the sample stretch alternates between rapids and pools, the sampling should reflect this diversity. Fluvial morphology and habitat composition should also be reflected in the sampling. To select the worst stretch of a river that has good status overall is not representative. Vegetation cover, such as density and shadow, should also be considered. Avoid sampling in a shaded area if most of the stretch is unshaded. Bridges, fords, or weirs should be avoided unless they are characteristic of the stretch. If possible, sample waters above the access point. Sample points should be accessible. Perform sampling in fordable areas and take precautions to avoid unnecessary risks. There should be no discharge from major tributaries in the study area. It is recommended to enter various data prior to sampling, such as geographical coordinates, site description, including the physical and chemical protocol, weather conditions, and land use. Review this information after sampling and add any new information collected during monitoring. It is very important to note the proportionality of habitats in order to achieve an accurate overall estimate. It is also useful to draw a map of the sample stretch of river. Step 3. Sampling for Macroinvertebrates Major stream habitat types are colonized by macroinvertebrates and generally support the diversity of macroinvertebrate assemblage in stream ecosystems. A multi-habitat approach towards benthic sampling will record habitats in a proportionally representative way. Cobble, or hard substrate, will be prevalent in riffles and runs, which are a common feature throughout most mountain and Piedmont streams. In many high gradient streams, this habitat type will be dominant. However, riffles are not a common feature of most coastal or other low gradient streams. Sample shallow areas with coarse substrates by holding the bottom of the dip net against the substrate and dislodging organisms by kicking the substrate about a half meter upstream from the net. Snags and other woody debris that have been submerged for a relatively long period that is, not recent deadfall, provide excellent habitats for colonization. Sample submerged woody debris by jabbing at medium-sized snag material, such as sticks and branches. A snag habitat may be kicked first to help dislodge organisms, but only after placing the net downstream from the snag. Accumulated woody materials in pool areas are considered a snag habitat. Large logs should be avoided because they are generally difficult to sample properly. Vegetated banks, lower banks that are submerged and have roots and emergent plants associated with them, are sampled in a fashion similar to snags. Submerged areas of undercut banks are good habitats to sample. Take samples from banks with protruding roots and plants by jabbing into the habitat. A bank habitat can be kicked first to help dislodge organisms, but only after placing the net downstream. Submerged macrophytes are seasonal in their occurrence 
and may not be a common feature of many streams, particularly those that are high gradient. Take samples of aquatic plants that are rooted to the bottom of the stream in deep water by drawing the net through the vegetation from the bottom to the surface of the water, a maximum of half a meter per jab. In shallow water, sample by bumping or jabbing the net along the bottom in the rooted area, avoiding sediments where possible. Sand and other fine sediment is usually the least productive macroinvertebrate habitat in streams, although it may be the most prevalent habitat in some streams. Take samples of banks with non-vegetated or soft soil by bumping the net along the surface of the substrate rather than dragging the net through soft substrates. This reduces the amount of debris in the sample. A total of 10 replicas should be taken over the length of the reach or approximately a sampling area of one square meter. A minimum of one replica is to be taken from each habitat or substratum. It might be desirable to take more replicas from habitats that are predominant. The number of replicas taken from each habitat type should be recorded on the field data sheet. Sampling begins at the downstream end of the sampling reach and proceeds upstream in order to avoid destroying the undisturbed conditions needed for representative sampling. Kicking is a stationary sampling technique accomplished by positioning the net and disturbing the surface at a distance one square meter upstream. Using the toe or heel of the boot, dislodge the upper layer of cobble or gravel and scrape the underlying bed. Larger substrate particles should be picked up and rubbed by hand to remove any attached organisms. A composite sample is taken from individual sampling spots in the riffles and runs representing different velocities. It has to be established how many kicks for each subtype should be sampled in each area, with 10 kicks being the maximum. The number of kicks should be proportionally representative for the whole basin area. In order to avoid losing material, it is necessary after every kick to wash the collected material by running clean stream water through the net two to three times. The replicas collected from the multiple habitats will be composited into a sieve to obtain a single homogeneous sample. If clogging occurs, discard the material in the net and redo that portion of the sample in a different location. It is necessary to remove large debris after rinsing and inspecting for organisms. As soon as the net is full, it is necessary to transfer the sample from the net to a tray or the filters in order to clean as much as possible and to attempt identification in the field. Field operations shall be conducted in a manner that protects the health and safety of field personnel. The recommendations given for sampling are usually the same as for running waters. The main risk is falling into the water and the current. If the current is strong, use a rope to gain a stable point of connection. It is also necessary to use gloves for manipulating chemical substances and wastewater. Step 4. Sorting and Organism Identification Once the sample is cleaned, scan the water and detritus for organisms. When an organism is found, examine it with a magnifying lens, determine its identity to the lowest possible level, and record the information on the field data sheet. Place each representative taxon in properly labeled sample containers and preserve in a sufficient quantity of 95% ethanol solution to cover the sample. Sometimes a very small amount of formalin is used in order to do a correct fixation of the sample. A label indicating the sample identification code or lot number, date, stream name, sampling location, and collector's name should be placed inside the sample container. The outside of the container should include the same information and the words preservative 95% ethanol. If more than one container is needed for a sample, each container label should contain all the information for the sample and be numbered accordingly. We recommend recovering as much information as possible while in the field, which will make the final report that much more detailed and conclusive. Any documented observations of other aquatic organisms will help in the overall assessment of the ecosystem's structure. After sampling has been completed at a given site, all nets, pans, and other equipment that have come in contact with the sample should be rinsed thoroughly, examined carefully, and picked free of organisms or debris. 
Any additional organisms found should be put in the sample containers. The equipment should be examined again prior to use at the next sampling site. We can ensure the quality of the sampling process by using replicates or blind samples or any other quality control technique. Step 5. Transportation and Storage and Taxonomic Identification In optimal conditions, samples should be transported to the lab and stored for not more than three to six months without review. A taxonomic specialist at the laboratory should examine and analyze field samples. This procedure consists of using the field data sheet to take notes about the location and conditions and to determine the taxa level. The last procedure is done with a microscope using an appropriate dichotomous key for each element. We hope that the information on this video is helpful. If you wish to obtain further details, there are a number of documents and websites that provide plenty of in-depth information. The main standards and guidelines to use during this process are the ISO standards, among others that provide guidance on the design of sampling programs and sampling techniques, as well as guidelines for the selection of sampling methods and devices for macroinvertebrates. We also recommend the Survey Design Manual, Biological, which was prepared in the framework of the EPIRB project. Thank you for watching.